رب العلا اختاره And he says that when you read Nahj Walaga, and this is also, uh, you know, Imam Khomeini also endorses this word. He says, you don't need an isnat, you don't need a chain of narration for Nahj Walaga. Just read it and you'll find out no one but Ali ibn Talib can say this. Words of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Because he's the only person who says that I was with the Holy Prophet at all times. And Abu Ali ibn Nur al-Wahid, the Holy Prophet alayhi salam says that I and Ali are from the same light. So they understand each other the best. Now when Imam al-Islam is introducing the Holy Prophet, he says that wherever in the history or the lineage of the Holy Prophet, you know the Shajar of the Holy Prophet, wherever it splits into two, for example one person has many sons, the best of the forefathers were of the Holy Prophet. The best people, the best mu'mineen, the best anbiya, the best of the awsiya, were the forefathers, the, the, you know, the chain of the Holy Prophet This is the description that the Imam Ali Islam gives, that the Imam Ali Islam gives for the Holy Prophet. And then he describes, he says, I'm one of the servants of the Holy Prophet. What are talking about? His words are the peak of eloquence. This is what Nahaj Balaga translates into English as the peaks of eloquence. Nahjul Balaga, the most beautiful words of the most beautiful words of wisdom and eloquence. There's no person as eloquent as Imam Ali al In the least, you know, the smallest words, he says the biggest topics. Just like you know, the method in the Holy Quran. I want to describe just a few sermons, very briefly. One, he describes the Holy Prophet. You know, the different battles that the Holy Prophet went to, the different, you know, the aspects of the Holy Prophet's life how brave the Holy Prophet was. Who can describe how brave the Holy Prophet was? The bravest man himself. How can the others understand what the Holy Prophet is going through? How strong he is in his nerves. He says when the, when the enemy came close, the Sahaba would take refuge behind the Holy Prophet. You know, many of them ran away and many of them would take refuge <laughs> behind the Holy Prophet. He would stand. And if whoever the Holy Prophet, you know, when he opened his eyes and he looked at anyone, that person did not have the courage to come close to the Holy Prophet. And no one day ever spoke loudly in front of the Holy Prophet. They would all, whenever he looked at them, they would just put their voices down. That's how strong the Holy Prophet was. His presence filled the whole of this atmosphere wherever he was, he, that's how the Holy Prophet was. And he says the Holy Prophet never ever lifted his sword except in Hunayn where he was forced to fight. Why? He said because the Holy Prophet was Rahmatan Lil Alameen. This verse in front of you here. Yes? Surah number 21 verse 107. We sent you as, you know, the mercy for the universe. He said because he was the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why he did not lift his sword against the enemy. Except for Hunayn. In Hunayn, because it is wajib to save your life, so the Holy Prophet was forced to, to fight and save his life. Because there were people attacking from all sides and the, the Sahaba had run away. Except for Muhammad al-Islam, he was, he was protecting the Holy Prophet. But because it was a valley, Hunayn was a valley, the Holy Prophet had to fight. He said, Yali, why did not the Holy Prophet fight in his life? He said, because he was a mercy for the universe. He said, then why did you fight? He said, because he was a mercy and I was the Jalal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was Rahmat of Ilahi, he was Rahmat Ilahi and I am Jalal Ilaha. And it is Sheikh Shaqiya, meaning the Imam Ali, you know, the Imam Al-Islam, Imam Ali Al-Islam has taken out his anger and shown that for 25 years I was so quiet and he describes it as, look at the two examples he gives. Look at the tough time that as if there was a thorn in my eye. I had the power to take it out, but I kept quiet for 25 years with a thorn in my eye. Can you imagine how difficult it, you know, even in your hand, you can't bear it for a few seconds. How about a thorn in the eye? He says for 25 years, I had the power to take it out, but I kept quiet. In another example, he says, as if a bone is stuck in the in my throat, nor could I take it down, nor could I so you know swallow it or throw it up. For 25 years, that's how I spent. 
then it it's not his right. That's why it's quiet. He said, either way, I was put under torture by the words and the tongues of the people. But no one obviously had the courage to come and, um, and disturb the Imam, except for in the uh, early part. I cannot go into the details now. So, Khutbah Sheikh Shaqiyah and other sermons, many, many other sermons, he describes his time that he spent between those 25 years. And then a lot of the sermons during his own reign. How long did the Imam Islam rule for? Okay, all together. So not complete five years. And he gives a lot of those sermons during that time and he describes to the people what he's going through and why is he taking all of those decisions. He says, now that I've come into power, this khilafa, this, the, the, the reins of the government that I have in my hand are just like a she-camel that has gone crazy. If I pull the reins, you know, I may kill this, this camel. And if I let it go, then it will kill itself and destroy me as well. That is the situation I am in. Why did he go, to, go through three battles in his own khilafa? <coughs> Within the Muslims, it were other people who were not letting him rule easily. So he went through three battles, Jamal, Sifin and Nahrawan. And he was preparing for a fourth battle between him and Muawiyah for the final time. And he was saying that I'm going to decide that. Okay, because the historians were, uh, most of the historians were not Shia, so therefore we don't know the true history. It was Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim, but was he just a Khariji or was he connected to Muawiyah? Was Muawiyah behind the assassination of Muhammad Islam? You cannot rule that out. Okay, everyone? Now, so a lot of those sermons that Muhammad Islam has given are in that difficult time that he is in, in Kufa. Now, about the description of the people of Kufa, everyone with me so far? If you, I'll give you another five to uh, seven minutes and exactly at 11 o'clock I'll stop and if you have any questions and I'll answer the questions um, and if you wanted me to continue then I'll continue for another probably 10 minutes. Okay, otherwise I'll finish within the next five to seven minutes. There are many, many different dimensions. You cannot uh, give, you know, the, uh, a summary of Najib Balagha within an hour or something. Many of the teachers in Qum have been teaching Najib Balagha for many years and they haven't still finished teaching it. Even if you can't read all of it, then every day, just read one of the short sayings of Imam Ali Just one of the, you know, it's many times they are just one line. Every day, one short saying from Imam Ali Remember always, in Farsi and in Arabic and other languages, they say, The person who tells lies does not have a good memory because it was all lies. So he says one thing, he forgets what I said. What, what lie did I say the last time, you know? He won't remember. Just one other thing that I want to tell you. You know, Little children, young people, they always become very close to animals and birds. So Muawiyah would distribute, you know, sheep and goats amongst children, small, lamb and... He says, and everyone would say, who is, who is this from? He would say, these are gifts from Muawiyah. So they would all become very close to it. After a week he said, go and kill all of those animals at night when the children are sleeping. And in the mornings, wait there. When the children wake up and say, who did this? You know, when a child sees an animal dead, bleeding, they said, who did this? And they all start crying. Ali came from Kufa and he killed your animals. So they, they were building that hatred against Imam Ali Salam. So you can imagine what you know, Banu Mayyad. And this is Imam Ali Salam, Nahju Balagha. In that time, he is speaking to the people of Iraq and telling them who he is and who are the Ahlul Bayt Alayhi Salam. So Nahju Balagha is extremely important because it gives you that description about the Ahlul Bayt Alayhi Salam. Even today in many parts of the world, you cannot mention the name of Imam Ali Al Salam. Scientist, the biggest learned man ever in the history of mankind after the Holy Prophet. You cannot call him Alayhi Salam, even today. If you're a follower of Ali ibn Abi Talib, then you must not be a normal person. One of my friends, he said that I was coming from, from Afghanistan into Pakistan and in that you know, year, he was describing like a jinn or something like that. <laughs> so he said, I, I took an oath on the Holy Quran that I am a Shia. He said, you are lying. That's what's called brainwashing. Nahju Balagha is extremely important. If a person picks up Nahju Balagha and reads, I promise you, a person cannot read Nahju Balagha and not come to the path of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I'll give you one story. Can I quickly do that? 93 or 94 in Birmingham. I, I was doing my A-levels and during that time I met a person an Afro-Caribbean, um, a brother was distributing 
You know, like small booklets, 100 maximums of Imam Ali al It seems that he has something to say for every moment. You know, every difficulty that I have, psychological or social, he has an answer for it. How can this man have died 100 years ago? He was 100 years ahead of his age. That is our Imam. The more I learn about her, you know, our Imam, the more I become proud of being a follower of Ali ibn I can openly stand up in any street and say, I'm a follower of Ali ibn Talib, and I'm proud of it. You know, I'm not, you know, many times young people who don't know anything about their religion and say, are you a Shia? Yeah. Iman of Nifaq? You know, when the Holy Prophet was saying, Ali, your love will decide faith and hypocrisy. Allah. 